Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. We are back to continue stitching this little project that Jennifer Couston has started on her channel. I'm not doing paper piercing, paper piecing. I am working wool on wool and I'm in the same areas that she is working. I am inserting my combination stitches that I like to see together on this little project bag. So I'm recording this for myself, step by step, stitch by stitch, color by color, how I'm going to create these combination stitches that I would like to use all the time. Let's continue on what we were working on. I'm gonna, going to try to try to copy those two flowers that are leaves, greeneries, botanicals that I made. I want to copy them on here because I love the combination so much. So we are going to continue working with this embroidery floss that is sage green in color. And on this second stem, because I'm going to do um, first stem, second stem. So I'm going to call this one my first and this one my second. So I've placed pins where I would like these elongated chain stitches to be. And I just love how these blues and greens go together. Kind of sage greens and sage greens and turquoises go together. So that's what I'm using. So let's go and continue. And I'm not putting knots in the back of my work. I am, when I work with wool, it's, the wool compared to other fabric is quite thin. So I'm actually dragging it through the wool itself to close off stitches or to start stitches. So I want to start right here. So if I want to start there, I'm going to just take a small little bite to, and I have, I'm going to say a background fabric and a hexagon. So I'm going to take a bite in the, oh, ouch, in the background fabric. And I am just going to leave a little tail that I'm going to cut off. Take, just take one bite and just two bites. And I'm going to cut off this little tail. I'm doing the set of videos for myself because I said before I can look at that. I look at this. I know I created it, but I don't remember how in which order I did the stitches. And for me, that's important on how it lays. And I can see these first two easily. But even just looking at this one here, which I'm trying to mimic now. I can't tell. No idea. So I am going to do a video as I do it in real time. So let's come up in these areas where I have placed a pin. Okay, so I can move this cloth down now. Am I in frame? I am. I'm going to take out this one pin and just stick it in my wool mat. I love working on a wool mat. And this is a longer wool mat. It's longer than 12 by 12. I don't know if it's 16 by 12. I'm not sure. But I absolutely love it. I got it online. And I'm making, I'm just continuing to work in these elongated chains in these in the areas where I am pinning. And I'm working, my needle is coming through the hexagon and the back stitching. So it's hidden in the back. Some stitches I go right through, but in this case, when I can, I'm going to just work in between. And you can see how I'm placing my, or moving my elongated tip where I can see where it's going to lay. And here I'm going through all my layers. OK. 
Okay, so I want to come up here. And I can, because I want to come up there, I can go underneath those two just to secure it slightly. So I'm not picking up any fabric. I'm just going through the back threads to tack that thread down at the back. And I'm going to come up where I would like to place my elongated chain. Take that pin out. And I am attaching my pins into my wool at the back there. That's why this is such a good pad for me to work on. And I'm going to take my thread up and around down the same hole. Take a nice large bite. And with pins, I always get stuck or caught. All right. And top. There we are. Love that. And I'm going to make another one at here. So let's go. I'm just going to have to just move my thread. Let's take this pin off, stick it in the top. I'm going to really fill up these. I love how it feels nice and thick with the two layers. Well, the one layer of wool, it's, it's kind of thin. Two layers of wool is nice, but with the stitching, it's just beautifully soft and textural and thick. So this is the top one. Maybe I don't... Okay, do I want him to be just little? Do I want him to be just a little bit bigger? I don't know. Do I want it to be a baby one or a big one? Let's see the big one. We're gonna go big. I'm gonna, I took a nice big bite. Just a matter of preference, whatever you like. That way with your needles laid down and I'm gonna make this, you can see how I, it's gonna lay just exactly where I move my thread. And these, this one came out, so I can't remember where that stitch is gonna go. I can't remember if I wanted it here or here. I'm going to put it here because I can't remember where that, where that, uh, ouch, pin was. It takes me a while to just decide. That's why I have all my needles and threads loaded up and waiting to go. I don't have to waste time threading a needle here with you. And that way I'll have all these videos on how I create my greenery. And when you put them in different colors, use different thicknesses of thread, they will look different. Okay, this is going to be a very long um, jump. And I am going to finish filling in these Vs with, uh, what stitches did I use here? See, they were just straight. I have elongated chains. And these were kind of straight and bent. Straight and bent. I guess like that, they can be straight and bent. Straight. So I have what? How many? So I got one V. Oh, I got two Vs. So let's just work on... I'm going to start in that bottom of the V. That way I can move my... Oh boy, and I already got stuck. On the edge of my, I have to move them right over. These pins, I stuck them right above me. And if I can catch things on buttons, threads, what have you, I sure will. Okay, so let's continue. That way I can place this down and see where I want to put it. I'm going to put it here. Go through and... I'm just going to put single ones because I'm going to put all other colors of thread for the elbows. So, or like extensions of my twig. I'm going to go down here. I 
I've always liked combination stitches, combining different stitches with my work. I, I never thought to combine different threads with my works. So that's what's so nice about Jennifer Clouston is that she gave me that idea and I love it. I'm gonna add a little, she calls these elbows, little branches to my twigs and do another one here. How long is that? That's fairly long. If I'm, okay, I'm over here. So let's just go maybe here. I'm just arbitrarily placing straight stitches in my work. And again, this one, I want to have a detached chain. So that, I'm going to leave that one just straight. I'm going to start the straight one. Where did I end there? I'm going to start this guy here. Because that one I'm going to make long, and I don't know how long to start him at, so... little elbow there. Let's go back to the center of this one. Okay, I'm going to make an elbow on this guy. He's going to be long. I have to try to make mine really have to think on how to make mine irregular. See, this really sticks out, and I like that. I'm very OCD, and I seem to be very regular. I like, I want to try to get more irregular stitches, and this will just be a straight one, so maybe, oh, I don't want it to be the same length as that one. Maybe I'll go about here. down. And the next one is going to be a elongated chain. So let's make the elongated chain. Whoops. I see my legs on the bed. Okay, that's uh Are you snoring? No, you're not. Jacques's just breathing weird. Oh, Jacques. Okay, um, I'm going to make this one a little branch, sort of, so I'm going to, uh, with a bent elbow. So let's, let's go there. Okay, this V is just going to be a straight stitch, and let's take him... Why is it a him? I don't know. Jennifer's or hers. Mine or him. Probably because I have four grandsons. That's why it's a him. Okay. I'm going to leave that straight. Okay. This green is finished. I'm going to tie it off in the back. And it's going to just go once. Twice. And I'm just going to go down and I have to feel, make sure I'm not going through the hexagons in the top layer. I'm just going in between the two layers. I'm sandwiching them together, cutting it right off at the wool. This one is done for now because I'm only working on those two sprigs. So I'm going to take this out and I will put it in a little pie off for myself. And I have an extra needle now, which is good. Okay, I love this. So where's my 
Where are my other greens? Brown twigs. Let's see here. Okay, I chose this brown. This is brown for twigs. And this comes from a specialty yarn store here in Edmonton. $19.99 a ball. Nothing cheap about yarn. And this is wool and hemp. I just love the, the variegated browns. It looks like twigs for me. And it's a sock weight yarn if you're a knitter. And we are going to... What are we going to add? These are this color here. It, they're just twigs and adding to the tips of them. So... I might start with some on the top here and work my way up this branch. I don't know if I want to go up that way. So let's, where do I want to start? Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom. I have one, two, this will be the third color. I'm going to start there. It looks like I've started already, so I have to go beside it. Just take a little bite. And yarn tends to unravel quite easily. So I am just going to take a little bite. I'm going to do a, a knot like this, go underneath. And now I can start. This is going to be trimmed right off. Oops, where's my garbage? And let's start. I'm just going to be placing straight stitches as twigs. So I'm going to place a twig right here. And that's the, okay, let me just go straight through. And if I wanna bring my twig just over slightly to give it just a slight bend, I'm gonna go just to the side I want it to bend to, grab that thread and go down the same hole again, out the back. So you'll see how right now it's lying straight and it'll get pulled to the side because you're couching it to the side. You see how it just bends slightly to the side? Okay, so I'm going to do this one, but I'm gonna bend it the other way. I'm not sure if I wanted to just go, no, I'm going to better just build this stem as it's going to be built on both sides going up. And I'm going to bend it going down. So let's move, give him a nice, oh, if I want to, if I want it to bend down, I have to st start about like that for the straight. And then move it up about like that and let's just go and catch it just catch the thread we're not catching any fabric and then we're going to go down that same hole and it'll just pull that in, where's my thread instead of um, having a straight stitch you're gonna have a little bent one going down so that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna continue do, doing these couching stitches. And I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go left, right, left, right, and see what I get. So let's go here. I'm, I'm just gonna have a straight one here because I'm gonna use a very narrow thread To add to these in the next with the next color go 
down here. So we're filling out our branch with different colors. Okay, I am going to, I like that, and I want it to go down here. I like how that straight stitch is lined, and I want it to go down there. So I am going to, that's gonna be my elbow. So my stitch is straight, and I'm going to just grab that pull it up and go down that same hole on top and it pulls it pulls it that way okay and I'm gonna go I will do a, just a straight stitch on this side like I did here okay this is couching straight I did two couchings To extend it somewhat and it's going to extend I have this green tip and that tip so I want it to go in between about like that perfect so let's go down and I'm going to add to the top of that so my next one on the left side we have here I'm going to lay it here, but I want it to come out here. So let's go like that. Oh, oh okay, I want to do all these couching. So this one will be flat and it look like it's going the wrong way, but I want my that couching stitch to bring it back here. And I'm going to just grab that branch and I'm going to pull it back by inserting the hole, my needle in that same hole. Just pulling it up. Just lay it down. So we have these nice, whoa, look at all sorts of things that you're seeing here. I've been looking at my legs. Nope. Okay. We have those couching stitches. Where's my needle? And I'm continuing. So it looks like a dried twig, actually. So I'm going to go. My next stitch will be in here. And I just want it straight to go a little bit longer than the greenery that's already there. And, okay, so I'm gonna skip one and when I mean I'm just gonna skip one because this is my next area that I should have been working in, I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna make a couching stitch. So I want it to go like that and then down. So that's the straight stitch. So let's just do the straight stitch. And I want the elbow to be up here. And I'm going to grab that thread only. And I'm going to bring it up to that elbow. There, so I just pulled it where I wanted it to be. I could have done two stitches, but I'm going to have a different type of stitching by doing couching. So that's why I'm doing it that way. Um, doing another one in here. And let's lay this flat. And okay, I want it an elbow bent, so I'm going to have it going up maybe like that and down there. Oh, come on, don't go down. 
don't go down. And where did I want it to go? About. Oh, okay. I moved my thing. Sorry. I want it to be brought upwards here. So let's just go up. Whoops. Just grab that thread and it will be brought up over here. See how it pulled nice and nice uply? Uply. Oh, that's a new word. Okay, so I have one space. I'm going to leave that space. No, I'm going to put a small one in here. Let's go. this out. All my needles, I don't want them to get caught. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's continue. I wanted just a straight stitch and I'm going to move just the straight stitch there. I'm going to leave this one blank, this space here, and I'm going to put something right there. And I can actually go underneath these stitches to catch my thread in the back. Couched, two couch, couch, straight, straight, couch, couch, straight. Let's go with a couch. This and that. I'm going to follow this line and actually use that stitching as it, my guide and pull it over that stitch. Okay, so I'm just at. This is a straight stitch. I'm just going to go under that stitch and pull. This is couching. I'm pulling it up to give it that little branch. There we are. And I like the variegated thread. You can see how the browns are changing in shade, just like nature. Oh, look, I forgot to do that side. Let's just continue up this one. So I have couch, couch, straight, straight. There's a space. Couch, couch, straight. Couch, let's go a couch again. So here, and I will go underneath this stitch. So where's my couch? Right here. One. There's a big gap here, so I'm going to fill it up. Underneath and pulling it. Oh, what fell down my scissors. Okay. So with the couch, you can see when you bring it back to that hole, it really brings it up. So let's go down the same hole. You'll see how it brought it up. That's pretty cool. Let's do a straight one in there. Go under here. I'll just go right there. And start in here. I want to start in here. I will maybe leave some of that empty for now. With Gosh, I love that. It's just getting so nice and thick. But a nice thick, not a heavy, gross thick. And there we 
this is going to be going out. Oh, shoot a Maru. Okay, I see that I wanted that straight. So what am I doing? Oh, okay, my straight stitch was there. I'm already under it, so I just have to go on over top and it'll be bringing my stitch up. See how nice that is? Okay, forget. I am gonna put a little straight stitch in there. Okay, it's gonna lay right up here. Um, okay, I am gonna put a little one in there. second time I've had to rethread this baby. It's because my eye is quite quite large and the thread really slides up and down in it. Okay, I did that one. I'm going to leave these. Do I want to leave three? Let's start with this one. I know I want to have one in here. this and I want to have a I want to have it couched like that so I'm going to go down there and I'm going to come back and grab that little thread and down perfect yes I'm going to add something in here so let's go this one. And I'm just gonna add a straight stitch because I'm gonna be adding a thinner thread on top of that. No, I'm gonna leave that. So I have thread here. I wanna go back to here. So I can go under this, under that. Oops. Oh, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go here, down, and I know I want it to be bent, bent there. So that's my thread straight, and I know I'm gonna be bringing it this way. Very nice. Still have thread, so I need I think I'm going to have a bent here. I've got a straight bent bent and let's go another bent. So the bent is going to be from here to maybe there. So let's go that way. Straight down. And let's see where I want it bent to. Probably here. Pull it that way and then I can tie it off. Oh, I love that. That is looking so nice. So to tie it off, I'm just going to take a small little bite in the just in the backing layer. So that's one. Let's go two. And I'm going to do a knot and hide the stitching. I'm sorry, not hide the stitching. Hide the back of the thread. So it just lays flat like that. OK, 
Okay, another needle. Look at this. Wow. I'm gonna continue with that, with this thread still to add. Well, you know what, why? why? It doesn't have to be all that. Let's just choose another brown one. Um, I'm gonna add some of that, what I, it looks like straw to me. These, it's really, it's a thin, very thin brownish thread. And it's going to be an elongated chain. So where I come out, I'm gonna do this elongated chain on a little stem there. So let's do that. Do I wanted to add it over there. Hmm. How many places do I have left? Just wait, let me count. One, two, three, four. Do I have any other greens? These are browns, browns. What is this? Stem. Okay, let's just, because I thought, well, what, let's put those on this side, but what's on this side? No, I have other things. Let's do them over here. So let's, my V. One's going to start there. this on just hold it with my finger and I'm gonna go one and two tie it in a knot let's take cut off this bit and come up Come up somewhere. Where's the somewhere? Down here. That one. Okay, let's come up here. Elongate. Let's, oh, an elongate. Oh, wow. Is that ever in a weird spot? Okay, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to take a. I'm going to come out the back, like here. So I can go down, right in the center of the V. And then I'm gonna come up in the same spot. So I made a little stick. I'm gonna do a very long el elongated chain up and around, down that same hole, and nice big bite. Look at how nice that is. And I am I am gonna go over for right now. It's gonna be a nice elongated thing. And it's so narrow and skinny and thin. And it just looks amazing. So I know my thin my thin is thin. My thread is thin. I can go under. Oh, come on. On thread. Okay, I lost my train of thought. I think I had to go under these two. Okay, now let's go here. Coming out here. Going down and then back up, making an elongated chain, thread up and around clockwise, and let's make a nice, long, narrow, it looks almost like a dying leaf. So different stitches and different threads will make it look so cool. And I have these two spots left. 
So I'm going to come out here, go down and up. Make an elongated chain. Love that. Nice. So I have one, two, three. Got some more. Hmm. I want to put okay, let's put one in here. So let's put our thread here. How far do I have to go in the back? Quite a ways. So I have two layers, so I'm just going in between the back fabric and the hexagon, so it's just hidden. Now let's see where I want it to come out. Right here. Let's go down a little bit more like that. Make a stem. Back up. I don't know what this is. It's raveling. Can you? You can actually see the hairs unraveling. <laughs> don't know what I'm sewing with. Down. Make a big elongated chain and down. Nice. I'm going to hide a little guy in here. So let's just go. Then I'll be running out of thread. So down, back up. Make a chain. And it's going to come out way up there. <laughs> I love that. Okay. And hardly any. So let's see what I got here. Um, let's end that off for now. One and two. Catch a little knot. And then we're going to hide our thread in between the fabrics. Okay. There we are. That looks gorgeous. I'm going to stop the camera now and I'll be back to continue. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye for now.